In this video, we're going to get started with ROS from MATLAB and Simulink. Depending on your robot, you might have different configurations for using ROS. For example, there is the single PC configuration where you just have one computer that is both the ROS master, so it's directly starting ROS and talking to the, your robot's drivers, and it also has MATLAB installed. So this computer would sit on top of your robot, for example, a TurtleBot 2. On the other hand, there is a multi-PC configuration where you might have one computer, typically a lower powered computer, still sitting on top of your robot and acting as the ROS master. And then you might have another computer like your laptop or a workstation that is running MATLAB or maybe other heavier processing code. And as long as these two computers are connected via some kind of network like Wi-Fi or with an ethernet cord, then you can do this. So the first thing you wanna do is set up this connection so that you can make sure you can use MATLAB with ROS. The first step is to find the IP addresses of your machines. Depending on whether you're using Windows or Unix, this is gonna be the IP config or IF config commands. So one of them might have an IP that ends with 38, that's the one on the robot, and another one might have the IP that ends with 134. This is necessary because ROS communicates via IP, so there are some environment variables you're gonna to have to set for your computer. There is the ROS master URI, which is the kind of the, the full URI of the computer that's running the ROS master. So in this case, it would be the address of the computer on the robot. And then ROS IP, which is different for each machine. And this is saying that this is the IP address for that specific machine connected to the network. Um, that one's important because, for example, if your laptop is connected to both Wi-Fi and another network, you need to tell it which of those IP addresses is the right one. Once you've got this connection established, then in MATLAB, you can use ROS init. Uh, if you've picked up the environment variables, it will use those, or you can do ROS init and then enter the specific IP you want to connect to. And then similarly, you can shut down using ROS shutdown. In the Windows command prompt, like I said, you can type in IP config, and then that will get me, in this case, a lot of different IP addresses. The one that I care about is the one listed under Wi-Fi, because I know that I'm connected to my robot over that particular uh, Wi-Fi. Similarly, on my Linux machine, I can type in IF config, and this is the IP address I get. Just as a sanity check, they should both start with the same couple numbers. In the previous video, we showed how to get the files downloaded. So what we'll do now is run this start workshop script, and that will set all the necessary folders. It will add them to our MATLAB path. Once we're here, like I said, we can try connect to our robot um, and set up all these environment variables. We could do this manually, or we could do this through the utility that we provided called ROS configuration app. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. When this app opens up, it gives you a, a couple of predefined topic mappings, and we'll talk more about this in a second. But this is a list of all the possible sensor data or commands that your robot could have. So for example, the velocity commands, the odometry, the color image. So you can go ahead and change these, as well as enter the IP addresses of your machine. The ROS master is on 2838, and the MATLAB host is on 134. Once you're done, you can save this configuration, and it will tell you that this file was saved. Go to this particular file and update your file name. If we go to that file, so connect to robot right here, I'll double click it, and then see here, it's gonna load that file that I just saved called my topic config, and then do all the environment variable setting as well. So the idea is that when I run connect to robot directly from here, then it should succeed. Now I'm connected to my robot. I can tell whether or not I'm connected by looking at things like the list of topics that are available. For example, if I type in ROS topic list, then it should give me the entire list of topics. And this is gonna be dependent on what you've started on your actual ROS master machine. So here I'm showing you that I started both the TurtleBot minimal launch, which gives you all the things like odometry and control topics, as well as the 3D sensor, which will start up all the camera topics. So I can dig in further. For example, I can look at uh, ROS topic information for a particular topic, like uh, let's say I care about the camera RGB image raw topic. And this will tell me that this topic uses the type of uh, message sensor Im messages slash image. There's one publisher and no subscribers. And we'll talk just in a minute about what this all means. So the first thing we wanna do is receive data from our robot. What we'll do is what is known as creating a subscriber. And we'll do that in MATLAB using the ROS subscriber function. So for example, 
by using this line of code, we'll subscribe to the odometry topic with the name slash odom. Once we have this subscription in MATLAB, we can either receive the next pose message, so we can wait to receive the next message using the receive function, or instead of waiting, you can just get the latest pose message that was already received in the background. And to do that, you would do the name of the subscriber dot latest message. So either of these will work depending on what you want. Typically what I do is I receive for the first time so that I make sure I have some data. And then as I'm processing things in a loop, then I'll do latest message. So I'll create a subscriber to the odometry topic. And here you'll see that's created. And then for example, I can do that. I can say that my odom message is odom sub dot latest message. And this will give me a message that has a particular structured data type. And it's saying that you should use show details to show the contents of this message if you want it to. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to do show details of odom message. And if I, if you see that, then it's going to print out basically a whole structured list of all the information that's there. And the places that we care about are, for example, the pose and twist here. So pose being where you are, like position and orientation, and twist would be the velocity version of the same. And you see that because I just started the robot, the positions are zero and the orientation is just the default. Um, if I move my robot a little bit, then maybe I can grab a new odometry message, show its details, and now you see that I have a slightly different X and Y position and different orientation. Now, this is a little tough to parse through. Um, see, the position is in X, Y, Z, but there's no Z because the robot moves on the ground on a flat surface. And then for orientation, uh, it's got four terms, and this is what's known as a quaternion. This can be converted to basically just the one angle that you care about, which is the angle about the Z axis. And to do this, we've actually written a helper function called get robot pose. So the idea would then be that I can say, for example, pose is get robot pose of that odometry message. And then that will give me the X and Y positions, as well as the angle in radians of how far we've turned. And you'll see that this is used a lot in the examples. So similarly, we can do the same thing with sending data to the robot. And this uses uh, what is known as a publisher. So for example, we're going to create here a ROS publisher in MATLAB that publishes to this mobile base commands velocity topic. And I actually have an option in MATLAB which says create a publisher and give me a blank message for me to fill out. So you have two outputs to the ROS publisher function. So then what you would do is once you have that blank velocity message, you would modify uh, the two velocities for the mobile base you can change. So the forward velocity or linear X and the turning velocity, which is angular Z. And then you would use the send function to send that data. Again, I'll make a velocity publisher as well as the message. And I'll say mobile base commands velocity. So once that is done, I can modify a velocity message to say have an angular value of 0.5 and a linear x of 0.2. And then when I send to the publisher, I'm going to send it the message, then our robot should move. So there's a lot more that you can do. For example, if you go to the intro ROS folder, you'll see that there's a bunch of scripts that will kind of guide you through this. Um, you can see, for example, intro robot control, which will do the same thing in a sequential step where you'd connect to the robot, uh, look at the topic list, some info, create your publishers and subscribers. And then this will now run the entire robot in a loop and give you the basically the up graph of, of its motion. Um, you've got similar things for, for you know displaying image data. So we've got something that will show you both the uh, RGB and the depth images. So I do want to run this one. So I'm going to maybe, I don't know, put my hand in front of the robot, run the next thing. And then you can see here I have my hand uh, in, in the color space as well as in the depth space. So this will be very important for the computer vision parts. Um, and, and you can see a couple other examples. The, what I want to spend the last of the time is, with is on Simulink. So we also provide a model here called test turtlebot model SLX. And then here, 
uh, this is showing how you can do the same thing. So publishing and subscribing, but instead of using uh, MATLAB, we're going to use Simulink, which is the, the graphical development tool. So I can hit run. So on the top, you will see the uh, color image. And you see that as I move, then it should update. And then at the bottom, you see the output of the LiDAR scan. Uh, here, I also have some interactive controls. So this will set the value of some variables. So then I can move the robot forward or backwards. And that will change things. Same with uh, actually being able to turn the robot. So make sure you check all this out and get yourself familiar with being able to command the robot, get data. And in the next few videos, we'll use what we learned here to do some specific algorithms for human-robot interaction, vision, manipulation, speech, and more.